the moment that you press order to the point at which the order is delivered to you, everything in the app, that's all completely automated. We want to do it as quickly as possible. We try and get everything delivered sort of in about 30 minutes. That's the true essence of the technology that we use. It is a golden age of AI and ML. Supply chain leaders need to embrace artificial intelligence and machine learning for digital transformation. Digital transformation is going to be the critical component for supply chain innovation. A lot of things which look like science fiction a couple of years ago are now reality. The key is to ensure we lean into machine learning and artificial intelligence to provide the best possible experience for the three side of our marketplace. So let's start with our consumers first. Our aim is to make sure our consumers are able to find and discover the food that appeals to them. And they are able to place and receive orders seamlessly. The second thing is we work with our restaurant and grocery partners to make sure that we are able to provide fantastic customer experience for our consumers. And lastly, we have the rider network. For the riders, we develop tools and systems so that they can deliver the order faster, with ease, and with safety. If we do all this effectively, we get what I call our flywheel. Consumers start ordering from Deliveroo. Our network becomes more and more dense, and network cost structure goes down. Our riders are able to make more earnings. Our partners are able to deliver food at a cheaper cost. And it attracts more and more restaurant and grocery partners. It increases the selection for our consumers. And as a result of that, more consumers are able to find the item that they want on Deliveroo, and more and more consumers join. And the flywheel keeps going on and on. It is super critical to really understand the application of AI and ML in your company. How it's gonna work for you. How you're gonna use AI and ML along with your processes. How the humans and the machines are gonna work together to drive the flywheel faster. directly involved in the transaction at any step of the way. We're just creating the mechanisms and the systems for that to happen. So we have to set things up so that the riders want to accept and complete the order, so that the restaurant gets things ready on time when the rider arrives, and so that it all synchronizes so that the customer gets their food quickly and in good condition. Customers are hungry normally, and they want that food quickly. The hotter we can get it to the customer, the better. So that's the challenge. It's a, it's a fascinating one and challenging. We have the order, we now need to work out, okay, well, how long is that order going to take to be prepared? And how long do we think it's going to take us to find a rider who's going to accept that order? And we'll start sort of setting those systems in train. And we have to price that order to a rider in such a way that they want to accept it. They're completely free to reject or accept any given offer. So we have to say, well, what is it about this order that might be interesting, appealing, less appealing to a rider? And behind that, we have a preparation time model. So predicting how long we think restaurants will take it. We have a travel time model, how long is the rider going to take to get from A to B. And then we have the whole system behind it, which gives one of the, one of the key innovations, I think, that we saw in the food delivery business, and Deliveroo was the pioneer, or certainly one of the pioneers of this, is that customer experience of getting all of that information presented to you in the app. Everything is in one way or another backed by technology. All sorts of different systems, learning, predicting, the whole interplay to, as I say, synchronize so that we get that food to the customer on time. Artificial intelligence, to me, it means trying to replicate human intelligence in a really kind of smart way. And a lot of what needs to be done, and in fact what is done, is, is, is simpler than that. It's you have a goal and you want to try and achieve that goal. We use kind of more of the machine learning side of things. A great example of that is our dispatcher, which we call Frank. So this is our software, which um, offers the right rider the right order at a particular point in time. We have all these models that predict how long is it going to take a rider to get to this partner, and then how long is it going to take the partner to prepare the food, the rider to load the food into their vehicle, 
how long is it going to take them to drive to the customer? And then how long is it going to take them to hand over the food to the customer? Then Frank, it gets all of these data points, looks at all the potential ways that we could organize things and says, this is the one that produces the best overall outcomes. Within the data and science organization, there are five disciplines. The first one is machine learning engineering. The responsibility of our machine learning engineers is to build our production decision-making software. We have data scientists who are responsible for doing the, I guess, the complex statistical analysis, which might include experimentation, econometric analysis, causal inference, to help us make the really, really hard decisions. We have data analysts who are responsible for building the, the tools and helping humans make decisions day to day all throughout the organization. We have analytics engineers who are responsible for making sure that we have the right, robust, reliable data sets to use. And then we have our data management team who are responsible for making sure that we have the right kind of data integrity and the right governance around our data sets. Initially, it was people in spreadsheets, um, and then it was informed by data. And then it's automated but via these machine learning models. So if you can imagine our dispatcher has to consider so many combinations of riders and orders. If we can find some maths tricks to speed up that consideration of the components, we then of course got data points to kind of make this more data informed. And so now we have our dispatcher doing hundreds of thousands of calculations all the time to, to kind of really, really scale this and allow us to scale our business. Can you tell us about what technology is being used here at this hub location? What technology isn't being used? So I think we're really fortunate in that the business is relatively new, so we could kind of build it from the ground up with the current technology that's available in mind. So everything from the warehouse management system that we use, the picking technology that we use, I mean, we use a forecasting model that forecasts at a SKU level. We have a model that's built by data science, so it accurately takes our expected order volume and plans hours based on the order volume that we expect to come over the next two week period. We obviously have the delivery platform technology that we plug into and we do that in a really specific way. So because we know how long we take to pick orders in this site, we actually plug in at a different point to your typical restaurant so that we call the rider before the order's finished being picked because we know that it's going to be picked in time. When you're innovating and defining the future, there's no playbook. You have to experiment a lot. We use a lot of our forecasting and machine learning models to try things virtually. Then we experiment in real life to try those things faster. We also do a lot of primary research, spending time with our end customers to really understand how they are experiencing our products. And by using these three things, we are able to try out things faster and cheaper. As the world is getting more and more automated, and we are using more and more of AI and ML tools. It is very important to balance the quantitative research with qualitative research. Spending time with your end customer, bringing the empathy back to these models and algorithm so that we can have best of both the worlds.